Yeah. On the quiz, looking at those two triangles, are they congruent? Yeah. Yes. Why? Give me a reason. That's all you had to write, that. That's not what you wrote, then it's not correct. Name the first triangle for me. Doesn't matter how you name the first one, right? So everybody should have got that correct just by naming this triangle. What does matter is you've got to match it up to the second one. What's A match up to? What's B match up to? What's C match up to? Does that mean you had to have them in that order? No. No, you could have had them switched around some other way, and I'll have to know that when I match them up looking at your quiz. Uh, looking at this, so you told me that angle A matched up to angle M. What's that tell us about angle A and angle M? They're congruent. They're congruent. So if angle A is 52 degrees, what other angle do I know? So right here has got to be 52 degrees. So A is 52, M is 52. I'm just going to write these in here so I can look down there and see them. They tell us B is 36 degrees. What's it match up to? B matches up to H. Everybody agrees Mason on that? Yeah. So what's angle H? 36 degrees. That's right there. It's 36 degrees. The last two, they didn't tell us anything about those. How can we find them? So add those two together, 52 plus 88, subtract that from 180, 92. So what's angle C right here? What's angle F? Anything real difficult about that? No, it looks like a writing. It looks like a right angle and it's not. Don't go by what it looks like. Go by what you figure out mathematically. Why am I pencil right here? Open up your books, page 317, and get out your homework, clean sheet of paper if you didn't do it, whatever. minutes 931 start right now we're going to do as many problems as we can you should write them down if you already have them then just you know correct them it's going to be turned in so you're going to get graded on whatever you have done so if we only get one problem done we're sitting here wasting time and that's all you did you didn't bother to do it and you're going to get one out of however many points I make it work Which one do we want to start on? One. One? Yeah. We'll go in order. Just go in order? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On this one, what's the first thing? And I'm not going to say here read the book, so if you don't have your books you can help me out, then we'll sit here and we'll waste time. Oh, did I? There's a line going diagonally. And the top here, or the top and bottom. Yeah, they're congruent. They're parallel. What's the given information tell us? As soon as we see that those two are parallel, what's that tell us? Should look for alternate interior angles. Now, in one of these problems, there wasn't alternate interior angles. 
and we'll maybe get to that one, who knows. But what do we know about those two angles right there? Now you gotta be careful. Can we name that angle B? Well, I have to name it a certain way, but that's a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? No. No. Brant's in trouble? No. Put it away. So I don't have to mess with it. So angle C, B, D, that's this angle right here. Put a couple marks in it. That's this angle, right? So that's another pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? No, yes, maybe? No. So we got a pair of angles, another pair of angles. Uh, we're missing. How do we know that segment DB is congruent to segment DB? Anything it equals itself. Now here's where we've got to be careful. It could be angle, angle, side, or it could be angle, side, angle. Which one is it? Angle, side. Does everybody agree that DS goes in the middle? Yeah. Is it between the two angles? Mm -hmm. So we should be able to write this two-column proof. You've got your statements. You've got your reasons. What's our first statement going to be? How do we know that? As soon as we see that we have parallel lines. So our reason out here is going to be if parallel lines, then what do we know? Then alternate interior angles are congruent. Got to make sure you write out all that. I'm not, if I made something, shortened it like I do every time, that's as short as it should get. What angles were alternate interior angles? Angle A, B, D. Angle A, B, D. Does everybody see that angle? Is that angle right there? Angle B, D, C. B, D, C. So they're congruent. That was a pair of angles. Is that enough? No. Where do we go to next? Angle C, B, D is congruent. Angle A, B, D. How do we know that those two angles were congruent? Mm -hmm. That was another pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Mm -hmm. Segment B, D is congruent through segment B, D. How do we know those two segments were congruent? That was a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? I think they named the triangles for us, didn't they? Would they say triangle what? C what? D B. Now you gotta be careful out here. Was that angle angle side? Angle side. It was angle side angle. Remember, to say two triangles are congruent, your reason has to be one of those four. One of those four abbreviations that we've been dealing with. It's the only thing they'll fit out there. Where to next? Two. Two. Do I have this one? Yep. Yes, no, maybe? First thing 
even before we look at the given, what's the first thing maybe you should recognize? It's got vertical angles, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I know about these two angles? So let's mark them somewhere in our proof. We're probably going to say, hey, vertical angles are congruent. That's a pair of angles. Is that enough? No. So this angle is congruent to this angle. It's another pair of angles. Be careful with this. T is the midpoint of what segment? S. That segment right through there, right? So does that tell us anything about segment RU? No. No. It tells us T is the midpoint of this segment, so what's happening to that segment? Split into two congruent parts. So that segment has to be congruent to that one. So that's a pair of sides. Where's that go? Middle. Middle. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yeah. What's our first statement going to be? How do we know angle S was congruent to angle B? TS, that's this angle right here, is congruent to what? Angle B, T, U. Vertical angles are congruent. That's another pair of angles. Is that enough? No. T is midpoint of segment SB. T is midpoint of segment, what was it, SV? Yeah. That was given to us. Now here's where you gotta be careful. Again, does that tell us that these two segments are congruent? Mm -hmm. no. Sort of, but we gotta state that, right? Segment ST is congruent to segment TV. Segment ST is congruent to segment TV. TV. And our reasons over there. Point splits segment into two congruent, and I usually don't like this, but I'm going to start writing parts. Splits it into two congruent parts. Hopefully you know that if it's a segment that you're splitting, you end up with two segments, right? If it's an angle you're splitting, you end up with what? Two angles. Two angles. Know what you're splitting up. As a pair of sides, is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yeah. And again, did they tell us the triangles? Mm -hmm. Triangle what? RTS. Is congruent to which triangle? UTV. And how do we know that? Angle side angle. Angle side angle again? Mm -hmm. So everybody got this one? Yep. If I not have it? Nope. <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> Three, that's where we're going? Yep. Yeah, that's all. It's the first thing you should notice in this one. That's congruent to itself, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a pair of sides. Now what? Segment AB is congruent to segment C. So segment AB is congruent to A what? BC. That's another pair of sides. Angle A is congruent to angle C. That's a pair of angles, but that's a pair of angles. Does that 
bit side angle side? No. But we do have a pair of angles. I don't, I don't know how this is going to work out. So if it bisects this angle, what's it tell us about these two angles up top here? So let's mark them congruent. What do we have now? Angle side angle. We have angle side angle. What part don't we need? We don't need this side, do we? So even though we know that sigma BD is equal to itself, that doesn't need to be in our proof anywhere. Do we have enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yeah. By what? that an angle is being bisected, what should that tell you? That those two angles are congruent, right? Make sure you're naming them with three letters, all capital letters, using your angle symbol. Angle ABD is congruent to angle DBC. How do we know that? We sort of did it on the last one. All right, instead of saying midpoint, it's just angle bisector. Ignore that, it's supposed to be an I. Splits into two congruent, and I'm gonna use angles this time because it's shorter to write than parts. That was a pair of angles. Now what? Now this time, did they tell you the triangles? No. Is that what we were trying to prove is the triangles this time on number three? So we have to make them. So we have to match up the triangles, right? So A, B, D. So triangle A, B, D. This is what you're going to do today. You're going to have to match these up. So this problem's like what we're getting ready to learn. Triangle A, B, D. Uh, What's the A in this triangle match up to? C. C. C and the other one, good. What's the B in this triangle match up to? B. B just sort of folds over, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. you just gotta have another step. And what's the D match up to? D. D. How did we know that those two triangles were congruent? Angle side angle. Angle side angle. Remember, it's got to be, if your statement is two triangles, it's got to be one of those four things. Now, what were we trying to prove this time? This is what we're going to do today. This is going to lead us right into what we're going to do today. Our reason, we're going to add one step to this. Our reason is what? This abbreviation. Does anybody remember what that abbreviation stands for? Probably look at your notes that you grabbed today. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So, once we know the two triangles are congruent, once we figure out or we prove that these two triangles are congruent, what do we know about this angle and this angle? They have to be the same. They have to be congruent. And the reason we can say that is if we know the two triangles are congruent, then CPCTC, corresponding parts, the parts that match up of the two congruent triangles have to be congruent or have to be the same. So we're just adding another step to the two column proof. The only bad thing or sort of bad thing with this is the fact that what you have to do with the triangles here, you had to prove them congruent first 
and then you had to make sure you match them up correctly. Does everybody have that one? Mm -hmm. What next? Four. Right, last one, we're about out of time. First thing that tells. Now here's where I sort of lied to you. I didn't really lie, but I said 99% of the time, if you see parallel, what should you look for? Alternate interior. The bad thing this time, we do have alternate interior angles. But where's that alternate interior angle at? on the outside of the triangle, that doesn't help us, all right? The other thing that we do have that I'm hoping you remember from parallel lines is if we smash the two lines together, does anybody remember what kind of angles those were? They're corresponding, They're corresponding yeah. angles. So if I smash these two triangles together, this angle and this angle are corresponding angles. What do you know about corresponding angles? They're congruent. So we can mark that, that's a pair of angles. And in our two column proof, it's basically gonna be the same thing, but instead of saying, if lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent, we're gonna say, if lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. Now what? Got a pair of angles, is that enough? Where to now? Yep. What, what, is it, what is it? CD bisects A E segment A. C C D? Is that what you said? Yeah, that line. Bisects A E. So bisects that segment. So what's that tell us about these two segments? So let's mark them as congruent. That's a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Do we have other given information? congruent to angle what? So that angle. It's another pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Does that go here or out in front? Is that angle side angle? Is that what it is? Is that in the correct order? Angle side angle? So should we be able to prove these two triangles are congruent? First statement going to be. Now again, normally as soon as we see parallel, we think of alternate interior angles because that's what happens most of the time. This time it's not alternate interior angles. What is it? All right. So this angle, we can name it angle A. We can use one letter to name it, just to make it shorter on us. This angle, can we name it with one letter? So it's got to be the angle D, C, E. And our reason, same reason, sort of, if parallel lines, then corresponding angles instead of alternate interior, corresponding angles are congruent. Pair of angles, is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? No. Or two now. How do we know that? Yeah. That was a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Segment AE, is that right? 
How do we know that? As soon as we know something's being bisected, what's happening to it? So we know these two segments are congruent. AC is congruent to segment CE. And our reason, same reason as we wrote down twice before, except this time we're dealing with segments. Segment bisector splits into two congruence. All right, so segment bisector. Same reason, basically, it's just changing that first part. Splits into two congruent parts or two congruent segments. That was a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? And this time I think they gave us the triangles, didn't they? What'd they say? Uh, triangle ABC. It's congruent to? Triangle CD. And how do we know that? Was it angle, angle, side? Angle, side, angle. Look back at the picture to make sure you don't mess it up. Make sure your names are on those. You're going to lay them right here. Do that real quick. If you didn't grab the notes, grab them. This first part, we're not going to do a whole lot with this first part, so we're going to fill it in. The first part only works for right triangles. These are ways to prove right triangles are congruent. Not any other kind of triangles, just right triangles. In a right triangle, somewhere out to the side, you might want to write this down. In a right triangle, so if I'm going to draw a right triangle out here, you always got to have a right angle. The side that's across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called legs. So in a right triangle, you always have a right angle. Side across from the right angle is called a hypotenuse. The other two sides are called legs. You should know that. Something that you had to go over when you did Pythagorean's theorem at some point in the past. Again, we're not going to do a whole lot with this. We're not, as a matter of fact, we're not going to really do anything with it. I just want you to see it so that you know it. These are four other ways to prove triangles are congruent, but these <coughs> triangles have to be right triangles. All right, the ones that we're going to deal with, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Those are the ones that we're going to use. All right? The reason for that. If I look at this one, LL, what's LL stand for? 
That means if you prove one pair of legs are congruent, the other pair of legs are congruent, then you have the two triangles are congruent. Well, if I look at this, this is a pair of what? Sides. Sides. This, the two right angles are congruent because all right angles are congruent, so that's a pair of angles. And then this is a pair of sides. So for these two triangles, instead of using leg leg, we could use side angle side. And it's the same thing. Well, the top right? one would be uh, the one we can't use. Right. This is the one. We can't use this one. We can't use side side angle, right? But for right triangles, it works. So it doesn't work for any other triangles, but for a right triangle, it does work. So hypotenuse leg, if you can prove it, the two hypotenuse and the two triangles are congruent and one pair of legs are congruent, then the two triangles have to be congruent. Now the reason this one works, Kellen, is because of Pythagorean's theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If we know this side and this side are the same, and we know these two sides are the same, guess what has to be true about this third pair of sides? They have to be the same, and then we could use side angle side or side 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 and go from there. HA, what do you think HA stands for? Hypotenuse. So the pair of hypotenuse and a pair of angles. angles. What's the other way that we could use to prove those two are congruent that we already know? Angle, pair of angles, another pair of angles, and a pair of sides. So you could use that. What's LA stand for? Leg. A pair of legs and a pair of angles. angles. Notice on this one, what other thing could we use? Angle, angle, side again, right? That's why we're not going to deal with them a whole lot, but I do want you to see them so that you know that there are other ways to prove triangles are congruent, but this, again, only works for right triangles. They have to be right triangles for any of these four to work. CPCTC. What does CPCTC stand for again? Four starting parts of triangles. Make sure you fill that in. Fill in, I think you just got to put the first letters on them or something, right? You can only use CPCTC after, you might want to, right here where it says after, circle it, do something. You have to prove the two triangles congruent then you can use CPCTC in a two column proof. Otherwise, you can't use it anywhere, all right? Now, in a two column proof, we have the given information. Branson, you see my given information there? Yeah. Read it to us. Ah, ah. Line, line, line. And you can't read it, can you? So, you have your given information. The proof statement. Listen closely to this. This is going to make your life a whole lot easier. And again, you should be able to get 60, 70, 80% of the problem, even if you know absolutely nothing about this. All right? The proof statement. If the proof statement is some triangle is congruent to some other triangle, are we ever going to use CPCTC? We're never going to get that far, right? So if it's two triangles, we don't need CPCTC. We're going to stop at one of those other abbreviations, and we'll be done. If the proof statement is some segment congruent to some segment or some angle is congruent to some angle, then guess what we're going to use? CPCTC. So that means we're going to go a step past the triangles. So your proof 
from here on out, if I'm doing that right there, statements, reasons, say so we have seven steps this time. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. Is that all right, Ethan? Can I just make up something here? And we have this. This is what the problem tells us. Read that for us again, Branson. Read that for us again. All right. What's our proof statement say this time? Second question So we're trying to prove what's congruent. Two segments. Two segments. So what's that telling us? What's our very last reason going to be in this? And the second last reason be one of those four. So we make a guess. Michael knows absolutely nothing. He understands none of these two comp proofs, which is a bunch of bull hockey. I had to think of a good word to say there because I'm not allowed to say those other words, Cameron. Yeah, but it's a bunch of crap, <laughs> right? A bunch of crap. I don't understand none of them. Bull. You just don't want to do them, all right? They're hard, and I understand that. It's a lot of writing, pain in the butt. A lot of things in the world are going to be that way. So he doesn't know any of it. But he, he looks at this problem, and he sees that. He knows that this last step, last reason, has to be CPCTC. Here he can guess. Guess one of the four for us. Which one? ASA. ASA? That'll work. What's going to go here? Given. Given. Third one's probably going to be given. Third one's given. Here. That. That. What goes here? The angles. The triangles. The triangles. Remember, to match up here, it has to be the Two triangles. Can all of you match up the triangles? Yeah. Get them to match up? I hope. You need three questions. So you got that, goes with that. What goes here? The proof. Whatever was in the proof statement right here. Segment whatever is congruent to segment whatever. We don't even know what the problem is. How many points would this be worth on a test? 14. 14. We don't have any idea what the problem even says, because Branson apparently can't read this. How many points are we going to get here if we guess right on that one? Eight. Eight out of 14. And we don't even have an actual problem here. All right? It's, it's at least higher than a 50, right? I don't know. You could grab a calculator and divide 8 by 14 and see what it is if you wanted. But we know it's higher than a 50%. Not even knowing a problem. So if you just skip these and write down absolutely nothing, I'm sorry to tell you. Hold on a second. I got to do this. 57. 57. Oh, there's a slight pause. You'll never know. There was a slight pause. It's like when they have South Florida and Billy Park. Monterey. So, I don't think this is on your notes somewhere. Uh, no. But down at the bottom, you have a little space down at the bottom underneath that last slide. Write these two things down. If your proof statement, that's what I was just saying over there, if your proof statement is two triangles, then you will not use CPCTC. If your proof segment is two segments or two angles, then you will use CPCTC. If I have a guess what's going to be on the next, just write it down at the bottom, Michael. I'm sorry, you got to write two whole sentences on the next. Just a killer. If I have a guess what might be on the next vocab quiz when you walk through the door next time? C -C 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 -C. Very good chance. You might know what it means, so you can write it down for next time. Corresponding parts, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are 
<coughs> What's another thing that we might want to add over there that commonly used reasons? And we might also want to add side, 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 angle, side, all those, right? Because are those commonly used? Yeah, yeah just about every problem is going to have one of those in it. This is where you use this stuff. And I know most of the stuff, camera and everybody says, oh, I'm never going to use this. And it very well could be right. And that's, again, I need to go up there and pause it before I say something stupid, so I'm just not going to say it because I'm going to feel like walking up there. I don't know what job you're going to have, because we don't live in China or Japan or one of those countries like that, that by this age, Mason's already been stuck in this area because that's what job he's going to do for the rest of his life. All right, we're not allowed to do that here. That's why we have public schools because we're supposed to make well-rounded people and then you decide as you get older what you want to do. I know I use this all the time. All right? When I'm building something, looking at something, looking at properties, dealing with property stuff, I use something like this all the time. All right. What this is doing, if for some reason, and then Branson, I know, I, 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 why would I ever want to measure a river? That's fine. I just, this is the problem I happen to make up. All right. This, it could work on many, many other things, not just a river. When you said I've used this all the time, I thought you were going to say it's my job. Oh, uh, other, yeah. Uh, other than, <laughs> let, let, let me rephrase that, Branson. I see why you're laughing. I use this all the time outside of these four walls. That's better, right? Yeah. If I want to measure the distance across <coughs> the river, okay, my son right now is buying a house, and as he was looking for a house, a whole bunch of the properties had ponds on them. Fish. And when you look at that pond and just go by what they tell you, I look at the pond and they say, yeah, it's a three acre pond. No, it's not. Somebody just estimated and threw a number out there. They have no idea. And 99% of the people who go look at that property don't have any idea if that's a three acre pond or not because they don't have a clue what an acre is. All right? They just take it for granted. Then they look at another property and it says it's got a two acre pond on it. Well, the three acre pond's better because it's bigger. Not if they didn't represent it correctly, right? So if we wanted to do this, and I again, I did a river. What I could do, I picked some point at the edge here. So I picked some point at the edge of the river. And then some point across the river that I'm going to match up with that. Now we could have, since I have a classroom full of bright, intelligent people here, we could stick one of you in a boat, have one of you stand on this side and hold the dumb end of the tape measure, and the other one row across the river with the tape measure to measure how wide the river is, right? Yeah, it sounds fire. Yeah, it sounds, yeah, sounds, sounds, sounds like, good. Good. Sounds like a Three Stooges show is what it sounds like. Yeah, what do you call All right, but one of the Stooges is missing. So we do this. We line up. We pick some point right here. That's where I start at. And we pick some point. There might be like a tree or something over on the other side of the river that we use as our key point, so I'm standing straight across from it. Anything. It doesn't, doesn't have to be anything special. Then I start walking. And I walk clear down to here, and I want this angle to be a right angle. So I'm going to walk so I'm perpendicular. Okay? You ever see those guys that are out with the little spyglass and one of them's holding the little, looks like a yardstick or something almost, and the other guy's down the road looking at it. You don't see them as much anymore because now everything's done electronically and they just take, GPS. they take something and set it down there and they got a little thing that spins around and does all the measuring. Talk about grading. All right. Talk about what? Grading. 
some of it, the surveying. All right, but most of it now they they do instead of have to have two goofballs, one looking through the eyepiece and one holding the stick. Now they only need one guy. They just stick the stick in the ground and they have the little spinner that spins and reads off the stick. All right, but the old ways, this is the way it would. So we walk straight down here. Then I come out this way until I get a line of sight here with that. We want this angle to be a right angle. All right, I forgot something. As I'm walking down through here, I want to put another stake or something right here. And then we want it to be the midpoint. Okay? So halfway there, I'm going to put that stake. Can I measure this stuff without sending one of you across in a boat and doing all and taking a chance of mason drowning and all that stuff? Yeah, because I'm walking on the ground here. So now I have this right angle, that right angle, I have this and this. Anybody see anything else that we know in this vertical picture? Angles. We have vertical angles, so they have to be congruent. What's that tell us about these two triangles? Angle, side, angle. If these two triangles are congruent, without actually measuring this, let's put some letters on here. This will be A, B, C, D, E. We're trying to measure this distance right here it actually has to be the same as what distance? Is that something that we could measure using a tape measure then because we're on solid ground instead of going across the river? Yeah. And probably might not even use a tape measure. You ever see one of those wheel things, Mason, that you walk with and it counts. calculates and counts it up? That's what we do. That's what you could use there. Now again, a lot of the stuff now is computerized. So you really don't have to do it the way I'm explaining it out here if you have the computer set up. And I know Cameron, you got the computer set up sitting in your barn at the house, right? 99% of people don't. I do because my son does architecture work and he does all that. So if we want to measure something out, like uh, for some stupid reason, my sons hit golf balls all the time and they one to measure how far it is from one end of our property to the other end so they know how far they're hitting the golf ball. Yeah, range finder. Yeah, if we had one. All right. So what he do, he got out his little machine that spins around and he measured it. it. Took about five minutes. So it didn't take very long. Uh, the bad thing is when you're doing something like that, if you don't know how to use it, and you don't know what it actually reads and everything, and it tells you that from one end of my yard to the other end is 800 feet, you're just going to take it for granted. Hey, the computer had to be right. It's not 800 feet. It was measuring something else. So you'd have to know if it's telling you the wrong answer or not. So, again, what do we know about these two triangles? They're congruent to each other. All the parts that match up in those two triangles are congruent to each other. So segment CB right here, what would it be congruent to? Segment BC. And I should have used the letters that we had on there. I didn't realize that I had W and A or W and M and everything on there. Anybody know how much an acre is? Since we, uh, I mentioned that earlier. A few feet. Huh? A few feet. A few feet? Yeah, I don't know. Acre's like, it's like a lot more than a few feet. Yeah, I thought it was like. Get your phone out real quick. Look up an acre. Like 16 I feel like it's like 120 feet. Hey, Siri. How much is one acre? Would that be something to know as you get older? Yeah. How much an acre is? Yeah. 43,560 square feet. Say it one more time. 43,560 square feet. Now the bad thing with that is, 
I tell you it's at? Does that tell you anything? No. Absolutely not. You know it's an acre. You don't know what it is. So I could lie to you and say, oh yeah, this is an acre. So what we do here, what we could do to figure it out, if it's square feet, we could take the, so grab your calculators and do this for me. Take the square root of 43,560. 8.7. For like seven different answers. 2, 8. 208.7. So about, we'll say about 209. Yeah. 209, if we take the square root of that, it's just feet, right? Yeah. Why 209 feet? So what is this? Is it just 209 feet from here to there, and that's an acre? There, and then 209. So it's going to be a square that is what? 209. 209 by 209. So about 200 feet on each side is an acre. So if we had the football field out back, you might know how long the football field is? 120 yards. 120 yards. So that's 360 feet. It's like, I think it's 50 yards wide. Is it 50 yards wide? Everybody agree with that? 50 or 45. I don't think it's either one of those, but we'll go with what you guys are saying. <laughs> so 50 yards? Side 50 and the other side 45. Like, so if it's 50 yards, yards, what is that? 150 feet. Is there more than an acre out there? Is there more than an acre in our football field? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. No, because it has to be the 209 by 209. It's not. Well, what could we do to find the area of this? That what do you, for area, what do you do? That one. You multiply, right? We don't want perimeter, we want area. 360 times 20. That's 54,000. Yeah. Is there an acre out there? Yeah. yeah. There's an acre and a little bit. Yeah, there's an acre, and if we subtract that, it'd be about an acre and about another 11,000 feet. So about an acre and a quarter in a football field. All stuff, by the time you get out of here, you should be able to do, because are some of you going to buy property at some point? Yeah. And a whole bunch of you, probably about 80% of you, are going to buy a property and Mason's going to go in and say, oh yeah, they said it has five acres. Then 10 years down the road, he's going to have to have it surveyed and figure out that he's got like three acres and that they ripped him off and didn't have any idea. And think that they won't rip you off. Had somebody come out and survey when I built our house. Somebody come out and survey the property. And I went back in the woods. And there was a bunch of briars and thorn bushes and stuff back where the corner of my property is. Do you think they cleaned that out so they could get back to the corner? No, they stopped about 200 feet short of the corner and just tied a little ribbon and said, yeah, that's, that's where your property is. And I had to go talk to them and say, hey, I'll send your guys back over here. Get your little chainsaw out. <laughs> Tell your guy to put me in a lazy butt and go back in there and put a pin where the edge of my property is. Because your property is perfectly square. The assignments of the worksheet, we got about 15 minutes. Get it out. We'll do a couple problems together. I'll tell you what, before we do a couple problems together, we're just going to run through it. Somebody might want to help Branson out. We're going to run through these real quickly. 
And you're just going to tell me if we use CPCTC on that problem or if we don't. So I don't know how Elizabeth wants to write it. I would probably write, if I could remember, hey, yes means use CPCTC. No means you're not using it. Okay? Number one, are we going to use CPCTC on number one? Yes. Yes. Number two, are we going to use CPCTC on number two? Yes. How do you know this? Look, look at what you're trying to prove. If it's triangles, then you're not using it. If it's secular angles, then you are using it. How about number three? Yes. Number four? No. No. Number five? No. Number six? Yes. Number seven? Yes. Number eight? Uh, no. Number nine? No. Number yes. ten? No. Which one is it? No. No, no one's ten? Yeah. Number eleven? No. Number twelve? Yes. Number thirteen? No. Number fourteen? Yes. Now we got about 14 minutes. Since you got to look through them, pick me a problem that you've seen as we were going through those that you thought might be confusing that we can do together. Four. Number four. Sorry, that's pretty ugly, but I'm going to have to wait with it. Know that these will be collected next time. Some of you are going to be real unhappy when I grade those. I think there was like 17, 18 problems on the homework, and if you all you got was the four that we did together, four out of 18 is not going to look too good on your grade. Number four, the first thing I would do, and this same thing on this one, there's 14 of these. Only do a couple of them. Not going to look real good on your grade. Uh, looking at what we're trying to prove this time, which triangles did they say? Does everybody see BYA right there? Does everybody see that triangle? Trace it. Yes, no, maybe? I'm going to split it off over here. Is that So it looks something like that. That's B, that's Y, that's A. Because I can't look at it all as one thing. It's going to confuse me. What's the other triangle we're trying to prove it congruent to? CXA, so that goes like here, right? So CXA, something like that. Yeah. That's A there, that's X, that's C. So now I have my two triangles. They don't have to look perfect or anything, but just so they're separated so I can tell a little bit. What's the first piece of given information? Tell us. Segment AX is congruent to segment AY. Is that in our two triangles that we're trying to prove congruent? That's that segment and that segment. So that's a pair of sides. So we're a third of the way there. What else? Well, then that's the other side. Is there a and then, uh, no. What's that upside down T mean? Perpendicular. Perpendicular. So that tells us that this is what kind of angle right here? Right angle. Right angle. So that's angle CXA. CXA. That's that angle right there. Mine doesn't look like a right angle, but we know it's a right angle. My picture. Then it tells us on this side over here too, doesn't it? So what do we know about this angle right here? And that's angle AYB. AYB, that's in this one. So that's right there. What do you know about those two angles? All right, if they're both right angles, then they have to be congruent. So that's a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? What other given information do we have? The um, segment U Y is perpendicular to segment A C. We'll just use that one. Then there's no. Other. That's all the given. Yeah. So watch. The picture looks something like this, right? Is that about right? 
Look fairly close. Yeah. Do you notice anything? Remember things that we've got to come up with on our own. We look for stuff like vertical angles. We look for uh, reflexive property. Anything equals itself. Uh, parallel lines, then we have alternate interior angles, so on, so on, so on. All those stuff that we wrote down last time. You see anything in this one that we could be using? Angle, angle, angle. What do you notice about this pair of angles right here? It's the exact same angle, isn't it? Right there where my fingers are. So if I see angle A, angle A right there, and this triangle is the same as angle A and that triangle. So what do you know about those two angles? They're congruent. That's another pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Mm -hmm. By what? Mm -hmm. Angle side angle. So we should be able to write this two column proof. That's our first, uh, we got statements. We got reasons. What's our first statement going to be? AX. Segment AX is congruent. Or, yeah, congruent. Segment AY. How do we know that? Are we going to use CPCTC on this one? No. So when we get to the two triangles, we're just going to stop. So we have a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yes, sir. Where to next? Now, I'm going to let you do this on this one. Segment CX is perpendicular to segment AB. How do we know that? Just do this. Because the other one that they tell us is basically the same thing, right? So what's it say? Let's just put it AC. Is that what you said? Yeah. Let's just put it all in one statement. So we don't have to write given twice or another time. What that tell us about angle BYA and angle AXC? It's 90 degrees. All right, and that's what we got to write next. You have to have this step in there. Perpendicular, and our reason here for number three is just going to be this. Another one that we might want to put. That's supposed to say perpendicular lines. Sorry that I is so ugly. Another one we might want to put over there. As soon as you see that you have perpendicular lines, what kind of angles do they form? 90 degrees. Perpendicular lines form right angles. Maybe we do have that over here. No. What two angles are right angles? AXC. AXC, that'll work. So angle A, XC, and? BYA. BYA, does everybody agree with that one? R what? No. Right. They're right angles. We have to have that first. We have to tell that they're right angles. Then, once we tell that they're right angles, what can we say about them? This is a right angle, this is a right angle. What did you guys tell me about them? Then they're congruent. So angle AXC is congruent to angle BYA. Another reason that we don't have over there that we should have, how did you know that those two angles were congruent? All right angles are congruent. All right angles are congruent. All right angles are, sorry, that's a congruent. That was a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yeah. No. No. We got a pair of sides. We got a pair of angles. Not quite enough, is it? And then angle A is congruent to angle A. Is it all right to name it just with one letter? Yeah. Angle A is congruent to angle A. Most of the time, we don't use this reason for angles, it's for segments when they share a side, but what is the reason here? Anything equals itself. That's an equal sign, not a Z. I can't write. That was a pair of angles. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we got enough out here. Is it by angle, angle, side? No. Side, angle, angle, side. Angle, side. So it's angle, side, angle, right? So that's going to be number six over here, angle, side, angle. And then our number six statement is going to be the two triangles. Did they tell us the triangles, or do we have to make them up ourselves? <coughs> we have the triangles. 
They told them to us, so yeah, what are they? BYA is congruent to CXA. Triangle BYA is congruent to triangle what? CXA. What's step seven going to say? Nothing. 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 If there was a step seven, what would the reason be? But this time there isn't, so we don't have to go that far.